Cisco email security image analysis. So some messages may contain images that you may wish to scan for inappropriate content. Um, so the image, image analysis engine can be leveraged to search for inappropriate content in email. Uh, it's not designed to supplement or replace antivirus or anti-spam uh, scanning engines, uh, but really to help uh, enforce acceptable use policies. So we went to security services here. Uh, we make sure that it's enabled. You can see that um, there's some thresholds there that are already set. Um, and then we go ahead and accept. So that's it. Now the, the it is available for us to leverage. Now it's about going in and configuring it for policy. Again, this is really meant to help with inappropriate content in messages and then uh, to make sure that they fall in line with company policies and you can use it for user education as well. So here again, you've seen this in previous videos, we're gonna create an incoming content filter. We're gonna give it a name here. Right, that's pretty easy, image analysis. For the condition, we're gonna to go to attachment file info. And then we want image analysis verdict. And here we're gonna say is suspect or inappropriate based on the thresholds that are set. So right down, you can see that a little bit further down there, it's image analysis verdict. You can see there's other things like file names, term, content, uh, uh, dictionary. We use some of this in, other, in some of the other examples. But uh, here, suspect or inappropriate. And then from here, we're gonna say okay, and then we're gonna add an action. So we're gonna look for attachment file information that is suspect or inappropriate, if that condition is met, then we wanna take an action. So what would that action be? Well, let's go there. So now what we wanna do is strip attachment by file info. So again here, image analysis verdict is suspect or inappropriate. And we could actually have a replacement message here, like something like uh, company prohibited content. Now, I didn't do it, but you could have uh, added a, an additional information to educate the user and probably a, you know, a better way of doing it, to be honest. All right, like every time uh, you go in, if you save an element, that doesn't mean that it's committed change yet, right? And and, uh, and therefore it's, it hasn't been saved. So uh, anybody use routers and switches, it's just very much like copy run start. Even though you make the, the, the configuration change, if you reboot and didn't write it out, it's gone. And that would happen here as well. And that's why we need to commit that change. Now the incoming content filter, as you are aware by this time, unless you've just jumped to this video uh, right away because it's something that you wanted to deploy, is still not in use, right? You have to go apply it to a mail policy in order for it to uh, take effect or, or provide enforcement. So we'll, in, we'll edit that incoming mail policies. We'll go to content filters. Again, you could have multiple content filters here providing a variety of, of, of actions, right? Uh, based on the needs of the organization. Here we're gonna add that image analysis. And again, it's added, but nothing's uh, applied until you commit that change. So give it a meaningful name here for a comment. Uh, it's obviously best practice to put something meaningful here for, audited, uh, for auditing reasons. So once that's done, like every other video, we're gonna go in, we're, we'll, um, log into the email security appliance. Again, whether it's on-prem or cloud doesn't really matter. Uh, we're gonna log in. We will uh, SSH to the console and we'll tail the mail logs, right? Because what we're gonna do is go through a test and we're gonna show you the results both in the logging of the, on the CLI as well as what you would uh, typically expect to see in the GUI. And if uh, everything works out well, well then great. If not, uh, then we'll, we'll look into what we may have missed or maybe did something wrong. All right, so tail uh, mail underscore logs. 
if I get not mail tail underscore logs, tail underscore mail logs. So what happens when you get a nice break uh, over the Christmas holidays? All right, so we will create a message, right? So this will be um, somebody obviously from the outside sending an email to an inside individual. And we're going to call it maybe something like holiday pictures. Um, you can put some content in, in the uh, message body. And then we will attach an image. And this image is um, going to fall under the suspicious or inappropriate category. So we'll browse it. We'll attach the message, or sorry, the uh, picture. We'll send it. And then from here, you know, you can either send or receive or just go down and um, look at the CLI right away. And what we're going to see here is um, a couple things, right? We're going to see the image analysis attachment at the score of 87, right? So that hit that threshold of suspicious or inappropriate. And we also know that it was dropped, right? So there's the message there says that the, the uh, attachment where image verdict filter image analysis took place. So we dropped that attachment. All right, well, that's exactly what we expected, right? We did uh, send a message with uh, an image that we knew would obviously um, trigger the image analysis uh, verdict that we uh, received. So. Here, we'll just do a send and receive, and let's see what the user ends up getting, right? Do they get the attachment? Do they not? Uh, do they get the email? Uh, let's have a look. Now, we know what we configured, but sometimes you still want to see the results. So we can see that they did get the message, but it's uh, the attachment itself, it says here that it was dropped, uh, right, because of it. And this is where that extra message would be handy, right, because you can say inappropriate uh, attachment was deleted based on company policy, etc. Here, we obviously left it very vague, right? So the user might uh, open a ticket. So the, the more information you can include here, the better. That's it. Pretty easy, right? If you are looking to add another layer uh, around acceptable use policies, um, look at uh, 